Hello everyone, Rockwood here, and today we're going to be looking at this super simple bamboo farm I built in my survival Let's Play. The big advantages of this bamboo farm is it is lossless, lag efficient, and requires only very simple resources to create. It uses two sticky pistons to push a line of slime blocks that catapults the bamboo into this iron bar grid here in the middle, thus eliminating the regular issues of these types of piston-based farms where bamboo would get caught on the edge of these dirt blocks and cause losses and lag. The entire system is powered by a single hopper clock and each of these are modular and can be scaled up indefinitely, either vertically or horizontally. All right, now that you've seen the farm, let's jump into how to build this thing. You're gonna to wanna to start with two lines of 12 dirt or sand blocks placed three blocks apart from each other. Then you're going to want to dig down one block. This is for the water collection area. Dig down an additional block here. This is where either your water stream or hopper line is going to go. After this, we're going to want to fill in one side with water, the side opposite from the hoppers. Next, let's put the bamboo in. All right, that's the basics of the design. Now, let's add the pistons. It is best to put the pistons on one side so the redstone wiring can easily transition between them. However, if you are going to be building this farm horizontally out, it really doesn't matter where you put the piston, as long as you put it one in from the outside block to save on slime blocks. Make a row of 10 slime blocks along each side. And then cap the ends with a solid block. This will prevent it from sticking to the glass and saves on slime blocks. Move those building blocks and come over to the other side and do exactly the same thing. All right, next let's put in the non-stick blocks. These blocks prevent the bamboo from glitching on top of the slime blocks. It also allows you to place the next layer of the farm on top if you desire to build this more than one layer. In my experience, it takes about nine modules to power a single furnace consistently. If you are running it 100% of the time, you have the chunks loaded. Next, let's add the torches. The reason we add light sources here is so that the bamboo will grow through the entire portion of your AFK, as it will stop growing at night if there aren't light sources illuminating the blocks that it's on. All right, now let's add the iron bars. These can be any block with this kind of hitbox and are required to stop the bamboo from being fired all the way across the farm and getting stuck. You need to build them at the bamboo's level and then two above. This will ensure that all the bamboo hits the iron bars regardless of the trajectory that the slime blocks may give it. All right, looking pretty good. Now let's add the glass to each end to prevent the bamboo from falling out. Obviously, if you are tiling this, you would only add the glass on the very end sections. And there we go. Only one step left, the wiring. To wire these up, I just used a simple redstone torch tower. The reason being, it actually tiles up perfectly with the layout of the farm. So as you go up with the redstone torches, you will always have a torch at the level of each piston. Additionally, as there is a slight delay when the redstone torches activate and deactivate, you end up with a very nice ripple through the farm so that the pistons are not always firing at the same time, 
thus reducing potential lag spikes if the farm is in operation at a large scale. As you can see, when I was putting in the torches, I short pulsed the piston. If this happens, simply put a lever or button and activate it to pulse the piston back. When the farm is in operation, this will not happen. Alternatively, you can simply power the piston before you place the torch down, which will prevent it from short pulsing. All right, only one step left to go. Let's wire this up and add the hopper clock and the collection chest. This wiring does not have to be very precise. This is just the basic wiring that I'm doing for this tutorial. You can wire this up however you want, and it will probably differ slightly as the size of your farm is going to dictate how much of this wire you have to run. However, if you're using my hopper clock design with the observer giving the output, you will need to put at least one repeater on two ticks, as a one tick pulse will cause the sticky pistons to spit out their blocks, which would cause the farm to break. I'm going to place two hoppers facing into each other. Dig down one. Put a block for the comparator to rest on. I always recommend using a different block than the surrounding area, as if you're excavating or working around it, you don't want to accidentally mine the block that the comparator is sitting on. At the end of each comparator, place a cobblestone block, and then on top of each comparator, place a sticky piston. I'm going to throw these redstone dust on first because that will let me actually place the piston against the dust. All right, now one last thing, place a redstone block in between the pistons, and that is your hopper clock. Fill it with the exact number of items. In this case, I'm using one stack. You can adjust this for your needs if you're feeling that's not fast enough, or if it's too fast, you can adjust the timing by adjusting the number of items in this clock. Now, to pull a signal off this clock, I like to use an observer, and that's just an observer facing into here, powering a block with a redstone dot on top of it, and there we go. That, that's the farm. Now being completed, as you can see, it's working. Pulses. All the bamboo goes down into the middle. All right, now let's quickly add the collection chest. Did this in a little bit of the wrong order, so I'm gonna have to patch this quickly by simply punch out this block, this block, add a chest, put any transparent block above the chest to keep the water in, and then if you did this in the order that I did, just replace the redstone, and there you go. That is, that is the whole farm. Now I'm going to jump away for a bit and come, when we come back, I'm going to show you what this looks like when it's tiled up once and tiled over once. And we're back. As you can see, I tiled it over one and up one to give us a total of four modules. And you can see how it now can be tiled indefinitely as far as you want it to go in any direction. And that, uh, that pretty much brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed and that you found this tutorial useful. If you have any feedback, I'd love to hear it in the comments below. This has been Rockwood, and I'll see you guys next time.